Hello, peoples. So, I don't know, it's a little late by me, but I got a little bit a little bit too much energy to just go to sleep just yet. So I figured I would show you the um, the blend shape preset that you can add on a point node itself. And what makes this nice is that we have the ability of basically blending with a, with a, um, a parameter itself. Or if you use a, a variable, you can actually get a, a ramp that you can alter based on, let's say, you know, in this case, uh, where the points are in the bounding box Y and you can actually blend it accordingly. Um, so currently you can see that the color and positions are blending. Um, and the downside that uh, of the, the preset that I set up for myself is that I didn't have uh, normals, I didn't have uh, alpha, I didn't have my velocity set up. So I figured I'd come in here and actually basically remake this, uh, this preset for myself. Um, and so the reason I'm doing it through a point sop is that if you do a point vop or vop sop or whatever they're whatever they're called now, um, and on the point vop itself, if you could do it in here, just doing the the difference between the first uh, input and the second input, and actually break it down uh, through a parameter that you can build and put up on top over here. But the problem with putting a parameter on here is it won't be able to take a uh, variable that you set up, a custom variable. Uh, so like uh, I set up a, a custom ra variable called rand uh, just up here. Y you would need to actually dive into your VOP network and uh, tell it what, what parameter you want it to read. And I mean, you can do it with VOPSOP, but it ends up being a little bit more cumbersome. It's not as easy to actually uh, modify yourself on the point node itself. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to put down a point node, uh, get our first input in, which is uh, a box, and our second input, which is a sphere. It's it, but it needs to be the same uh, geometry. As you can tell, I'm just doing a little ray onto the onto a sphere that I made, and then a little smooth, and then just giving it some color, so I can go between a box and a sphere, and it's the same topology as you can see. Um, so the the reason for that is that a point a point SOP will break if you put two different uh, topologies into into um, either of the inputs. So basically what you want to do is you want to go into your edit parameter interface, which is just under your options for the node itself. And we're going to put down just a, a float uh, to begin with. And this will be our blender um, parameter. So I'm going to do blender. Um, and I'm, I'm going to set the range. Uh, set the range first or else, uh, you know, Houdini might get a little confused or whatnot and it might generate it out with a with a 10. So you won't be able to just go 0 to 1 or, or negative 1 or whatever it is that you want to actually set up. So uh, why don't we set this up with, um, what you're going to do is you're going to add this uh, the difference between your uh, first input uh, and the second input. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the second input minus the first input's tz, uh, tx, ty, and tz values times the um, uh, channel that we just made. I'm going to say Blender. Um, and if you can see easier. Uh, so as you can just see, it's the tx plus the difference between the second input and se um, first input's tx multiplied by the Blender. Um, so as you can see right now, it's still a box. But if we go uh, to one and click away because it's the dang what I do okay, um, and you can see it, if we go to one, it'll be our our second input, and go back to zero, it'll be our first input. And the reason I put to negative one is so you can um, basically go inverted. Uh, so basically, we want to just copy this and do it for the TYTZ um, uh, transforms. Uh, oops, right. might be nice to fill out the rest of it. TY, TY, and RTZ. TZ, oops, lowercase z. I should change the colors so it's a little easier to read. It's like yellow on green. Um, so now we have all of our uh, transform inputs. And as you can see, it works out quite nice. So I'm going to do the same thing again on color and on uh, normal and on whatever other attributes that I want. So, you know. Just make sure when you do your, oop, um, I copy it, so I should do a paste copied expression. Uh, it makes it easier that I can just go in and update just the N to make it the normals, just the Y, uh, N for the Y, and N for the Z. Now, uh, the normals have not been updated. So let me let me reapply the normals just to make it a little easier for uh, for being able to see what's going on. Do I even have normals? Okay, you have the normals on 
the box and the sphere and so as you can tell all the normals get updated as you blend it so now that we have normals we're going to do that for color and we're going to do that for velocity and we're going to do that for whatever else um, I might want to uh, cut this out so it makes it a little easier uh, you know just to, or speed this up or something in post because everybody likes editing in post but basically what I'm doing here is uh, CR, CG, and CB and make sure you keep the second input and CB, RGB, B, and B. So now we have color applied. And if you invert, it'll try to invert, but I tend to think the values will end up going below zero or uh, push beyond one, uh, which won't be helpful for, for, I mean, it can be helpful, it just depends on how you're using it. Um, and then velocity. So I'm going to do our VX. VY, yeah. VY and a VZ. VZ. Super VZ. See what I'm doing here? It's super VZ. Ha ha ha. Uh, fail. Okay, so uh, we have everything applied for our uh, normal parameter, and this is basically all the attributes that I'm really looking for. Um, and so now, uh, that we're basically set on a, a reasonable, uh, you know, heck with it. And we'll just do our alpha, uh, same, same dealy. Copy parameter, paste in the expression, and it's CA. So our C A C A C A. So okay, now that we're set up on this, um, what we could do now is basically set up our first pull down. Um, and so since it remembers everything um, uh, that you have set, I'm going to turn off everything else. I'm going to turn off my all the other ones that I'd, I'd set up and just leave it as just position for the time being because we won't know what we'll need in the future. So when you save this, save preset, it'll be. Um, whatever is currently set. So you don't want everything else applying in, in the first place. So I'm just going to do um, parm blend uh, and just say uh, save preset. And so when you look down here, you'll be you'll have your parm blend. So now we want to set up a ramp. Um, we we'll go back into our parameter interface. We're going to put down another uh, float and we're going to put down a ramp um, uh, float as well. So this is going to be our ramp doesn't really matter what you name these things. Um, yeah, ramp blender, why not? And input, uh, input value. And so what we're going to do, except, is that we're going to have the blender read from the ramp at whatever the input is here. So just for the sake of setting it up, um, I'm going to put in my BBY, and what I'm going to do, set up our CH ramp to read from the ramp. We'll actually be able to see it um, show up, and, and we'll be able to know that we're doing this correctly. So our ramp is uh, just the name of ramp, and our input is going to be from CH, our input parameter. So basically, we're reading the input um, uh, parameter to know where from the ramp we're going to be reading from and we need to give a default value in case anything breaks basically uh, and as you can see right off the bat we start to see that the ramp is now reading correctly so now we have a ramp variable uh, that a uh, ramp parameter that is basically altering our positions and if we turn on our color uh, you can see right off the bat it's just working so now we have uh, a two different presets, oh, I guess as soon as I save this as a preset, we'll have two different presets that basically give us exactly what we need. Um, so now we can use this in the future at will to make basically have a, uh, a blend shape. So I'm going to set this up according to how I want it to actually uh, uh, generate itself. So I'm going to go back into the parameter interface and I'm going to actually hide the blender. Um, now the reason I'm doing this is just so I don't mess around with this in the future and th this is kind of a, an option for you. You don't need to do that 
um, so that in case in the future you want to be able to actually access that parameter, you can, but it's not like it's going to actually affect anything. Oop, eh, if like I put in the BBY again. Not like it'll actually affect anything if it's visible or not. So it's kind of uh, up to you if you want that to actually be visible. Uh, visible. As you notice on the, the original one I made, I, I went with a different, a different method of doing it. Um, and actually to have it show, uh, showing. So I'm just going to uh, leave it hidden on this one because we have two different um, presets that we can have. So I'm going to save this as a preset. Um, color and everything else is turned off. So I'm going to have that um, Parm Blend. I'm going to do a Ramp Blend and just hit Save. So now we have uh, two different blenders here. We have our Ramp Blend and our Parm Blend. So if I do a point node and connect in the first input and the second input and just go to our um, parm blend we have our parameter blender Ooh, sweet. Okay, and then if we just jump right over into our ramp blend now we have a ramp blender um, and oh I guess I set this out of 10 um, so the I guess it doesn't really matter so much, but it's not going to be. You notice it's kind of freaking out, so I'm gonna I'm going to correct that. Um, now I've had some issues in the past where if I actually adjust this, it doesn't always update. It did this this time. I guess if anything, it's probably fixed itself and go like that. Um, but I have had times where, uh, let's say on a, on a custom OTL, it won't actually update what that parameter is, and I've needed to just go in and delete it and remake it. Um, but that's on a, on a custom OTL, I guess. Uh, but we didn't have that problem here, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to hit apply, I'm going to hit save, and I'm going to basically resave the ramp blend, which is right there. Save preset. So now we're good. Uh, now we have two different presets that we can use at will and override or whatever else ramp blend versus parm blend. And you're good to go. Um, I hope this uh, showed you a fun little fun little way of doing a blend shape as need be um, now again this is just how I do a blend shape if you do it if you want to make it through a uh, Vopsop you can as well but um, I've just found it to be pretty easy uh, using a point node because uh, you get all these controls it's super easy you don't need to modify any nodes or, or set up all kinds of switches and everything else it's already just made for you alright um, uh, thank you for watching and uh, I hope this could be of, of some help for you and um, have a good day